Aloha, everybody. It is I, the Great Clement, and oh boy, it's been a long time since I did a Let's Play, huh? Back in November was the last time, and I've been doing one-shot videos ever since, and I want to get back into the groove of this thing, and God knows we definitely need entertainment now more than ever. Uh, Long-time fans may remember that back in the early 2010s, I played my absolute favorite Nintendo 64 game of all time, Star Fox 64. It's a fantastic watch, it's still on this channel if you want to check it out, but I never actually looked at the original game, the very first entry in the Star Fox series. So I figured, you know what, this will be a good warm-up let's play before I move on to something bigger and much more substantial. Let's start off with Star Fox on the Super Nintendo. You may look at the graphics and think to yourself, wait, this is on the Super Nintendo? Oh yes, this is absolutely an SNES game. Star Fox takes advantage of a very great graphics chip known as the Super FX chip, which actually makes polygons possible on this 16-bit console. So it was pretty revolutionary when this game came out. There was no game that looked like Star Fox when it debuted back in 1993. At least, not on Super Nintendo. Of course there's like PC games and you have like the George Lucas, uh, the LucasArts like Star Wars TIE Fighter games and stuff like that. I'm sure those were around long before this, but uh... Still, for the Super Nintendo, this was pretty fresh, pretty neat. That's right, General Pepper, don't you ever doubt me. I am a master pilot, goddammit. <laughs> I am, Fox. <laughs> anyway, I'm going up with uh, control setup B, because I like having the blaster on the bottom button. Here is the world map. This is the Lilat system, home to the Star Fox crew. And uh, we have a lot of pathways that we can take, at least three of them in order to get to the destination Venom, where our big bad villain Andros is hiding out. Uh, I'm going to be doing every single pathway in this playthrough. I'm going to be doing level 1, level 2, level 3, but I'm going to start in ascending order in terms of difficulty, so we'll start off with level 1. Star Fox Team, our last resort is to counterattack Venom. Good luck. Good luck. You gotta love those sound effects they use as a stand-in for the voiceovers. <laughs> Any of folks, when Corneria begins, the first thing you want to do is follow Slippy under the archway. Prove how much of a goddamn great pilot you are, like I did in the training section and fly under those archways, and then at the end, you'll be rewarded with twin blasters underneath the blue archway. And twin blasters are something you absolutely want to grab because it boosts your attack power, it turns your one laser into two lasers, and uh, you want to try and keep that as long as you can. It makes the game so much easier. <laughs> and you can keep it all the way to the very end of the game if you want. Like, if you don't die, and you don't, like, break off your wings, the Twin Blasters will remain with your person. So you just have to make sure you don't die, and yeah, if you run into buildings too much, run into enemies too much, if you're turning the ship sideways and then you clip the wings on the ground too much, you can break off the wings and then you'll lose your Twin Blasters. Uh, you don't actually lose, like, altitude or anything. You don't actually start to, like, lower like you do in Star Fox 64. Uh, broken wings just means that you're just gonna have a really bad red wing and it's not going to look as good as the other wing, you know. <laughs> and you can't use Twin Blasters until you get all the necessary upgrades, but either way. Here we are flying through Corneria, the first planet, passing by all these buildings. Yes, those are buildings. I know they don't have any windows, but hey, it's the Super FX, you know? <laughs> Unless you want this thing to run at two frames a second, they couldn't really put in that much detail, come on. <laughs> This game is basically like a tech demo, really. Like, Star Fox was just a proof of concept that, hey, we can make 3D work on the Super Nintendo, 
And uh, it would have been too much work to make like a ridiculously gigantic game otherwise. And uh, Star Fox is a game you can actually beat in about 30 minutes if you know what you're doing. You can beat this game in about a half hour uh, from start to finish when you know what you're doing. And that just adds to the arcadey, simplistic feel that I love about Star Fox, that I love about Star Fox 64. It's not the most gigantic game in the world, but it is still so fun to go back and replay and try to get a better score every time you play through the game, you know? That's what I love about the first two Star Fox games. That's what I love. So at the end of every stage, we have to deal with a boss, and this right here is the attack carrier. The most obvious thing about Star Fox bosses is that they're usually gray and blue, except for their weak points, their openings, those are going to be red and yellow, and you want to shoot those yellow and red openings whenever they pop up. So they open up the flutters, the shutters I mean, the flappers, the flaps, I don't know. They open up the flaps where the ships come out, you shoot them, and you break them off, and then eventually when all the parts are gone, you just shoot the main body over and over and over again until it blows up and dies. Alrighty, folks, so that was Corneria, the very first stage of the game. Let's see how I did. Booyah! 100%. I got an extra credit for my treble. <laughs> this playthrough, I'm going to be doing the best I can to get 100% in every single stage. Uh, and one thing to help with that is keeping my teammates alive. Uh, so whenever Falco, Slippy, or Peppy are being harassed by an enemy, they're being chased by one, make sure you take them down because they can actually help you raise your score, you know. Andros's forces intend to build a base in this area. Destroy the Rock Crusher! Good luck. Will do, General Pepper, will do. So when Stage 2 begins, we actually go inside the cockpit of the R-Wing, the ship we're flying, and we get to shoot things in first person. We actually get a cursor that aims for us. We can see where the lasers are going to go. We don't normally have a cursor. And, uh, you know, it's just fun to be traveling through space and shooting out all of these different multicolored ships. However, a lot of people don't know that in the original Star Fox, you don't have to be in first person view. No, if you want the, the R-Wing to be in third person, if you want to be outside of the cockpit, uh, if you push select on the controller, you can easily get out of the cockpit and just play the level like it was Corneria. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty fun, pretty fun. Uh, you can only go into first-person view with the space levels. If I was in Corneria and I pushed the select button, there's like two camera angles you have. You have like far away and like really, really close. So like, you know, you're right up the R-Wing's ass. <laughs> right up its ass. But uh, you can't go into first-person view when you're in Corneria. But whenever you're in like the sectors, whenever you're in the asteroid belt, the level coming up, as long as you're in outer space, you can go into first-person view whenever you want. In fact, the levels usually start off that way, so... You're not really prompted to go into first-person. It always just is in first-person. I know it's you, Slippy. I don't care. You're annoying. Everyone hates you. <laughs> I'll be as greedy as I want, Toad! <laughs> So anywho, if you're living under a rock and you don't know what the plot of this game is, uh, Star Fox is about an evil scientist known as Andros. He was performing a whole bunch of screwed up experiments on Corneria, he was polluting the planet, and eventually the Cornerian army, under the control of General Pepper, said, Get the hell out of here, you stupid old bastard. So Andros was exiled from Corneria. He was sent away to live on the planet Venom. And then years pass, and Andros manages to turn Venom into a wasteland, and he manages to assemble an army of, you know, followers, each with their own airships and whatnot, and now Andros is back, and he's declared revenge on Corneria, and he wants to conquer the entire Lilat system. So that's not good, that's not good. And the only thing that can stop Andros is a crack team of mercenaries known as Star Fox. Four pilots who fly around in these R-Wings. You got Peppy Hare, who is a rabbit. You got Slippy Toad, who is a toad. You got Falco Lombardi, who is the blue bird. And of course, the player character, the pilot, 
Fox McCloud, whose father actually died to Andros years ago uh, in some skirmish we don't really hear about. But they do reference his father being killed, so it is something that happened in this continuity. Um, we're not going to be running into a lot of stuff that you'll see in Star Fox 64. There's no Star Wolf or anything. Uh, so yeah, you know, the very first game was just very basic. You know, Andros is a bad guy. He's got an army. We want to take out all of his toys. Like I did right there. That was the Rock Crusher, by the way. <laughs> Again, just shoot the red, yellow, glowy things. When they're gone, you know, just, uh, you win. Don't shoot the blue and gray. Shoot the red, yellow, glowy opening spots. That's about it. Alrighty, folks, and that is the Asteroid Belt. So, let's see how I did, and... But, of course. But, of course. <laughs> now, I know some of you might be watching this footage, and you might be thinking to yourself, Wait a minute, Clement, wait a minute. I saw you miss an enemy. I saw you absolutely miss an enemy, and somehow you still got 100%. How does that work? I'm just that good. I'm just that good. I don't know what to tell you. I'm just that good. <laughs> No, but honestly, the way I understand it is that you're trying to fill up a meter by the end, and just by destroying enemies, it fills that meter. And as long as you get enough enemies killed, as long as you just destroy enough of the bad guys, it will fill up the meter and give you a 100% bonus, even though you're not technically taking out every single enemy in the stage. So you don't need to worry about everybody, you know? You just have to worry about taking out as much as you can. And I also believe that having your teammates alive, like Falco, Slippy, Peppy, I believe they will take out stragglers that you happen to miss, according to the instruction manual, anyway. And I'm not sure if that's an actual, legit mechanic, but uh, that's why I want to keep my teammates alive. I want to make sure nothing happens to my boys, because that helps me get 100% bonus. So, uh, yeah, just make sure you blow up everything you see, and you should be fine. Anywho, folks, here we are on stage three of level one. This is one of the most awesome levels in the whole entire game. I love the Space Armada. This is such a technical achievement. Again, you guys gotta remember, this is 1993. This is kind of like a tech demo, and they're just trying to show what can Star Fox do? What are you capable of with this technology on the Super Nintendo? Well, here we have a level where we're flying through outer space. We're going by all of these giant Armada ships, all of these giant dreadnoughts and stuff, and then we have to fly into some of them. Come on, Peppy, let's go into this one. Let's go into this one. Aw, oh, yeah. So all of a sudden, the shutters open, and now we're inside one of the ships. We're not out in outer space anymore. And these are some of my favorite segments in all of Star Fox ever, because even Star Fox 64 and Star Fox, like, Assault and stuff like that, they don't do enough of these, like, corridor sections where you're, like, dodging pillars and dodging things while flying through these little thin tubes and stuff, and that's like some of the most fun with Star Fox, because you're flying this really fast R-Wing, you're flying this really fast spaceship, and when things pop up and you don't want to run into them, it's like, oh boy! So you're constantly like juking and jiving and tilting your ship left and right in order to dodge all that stuff, and it's just awesome, man! It's so freaking awesome. You got like these little tinier carriers, these little tinier ships with like weak points that fly by you and you want to try and shoot them down as they approach. So here we are. There's one ship with like three glowy fuck me lights. Shoot them up, shoot them up, shoot them up. Booyah! I took it out, I took it out. That's awesome. <laughs> Also, the soundtrack of this stage is fantastic. I love the soundtrack of Star Fox. The music of this game is so fantastic. And, uh, you're all probably familiar with this music because you've played lots of Super Smash Brothers. I remember when Super Smash Brothers Melee came out, and the most popular stage in that game was, uh, Corneria, which was the Great Fox. And it uses a hybrid track of Venom and Corneria from the very original game. And then Brawl came out, and they had a whole bunch of remixes from the original game, and god, the original game had such a good soundtrack. Such a damn good soundtrack. Ugh. I believe with this stage, uh, you're trying to shoot at the core of all the ships, right? So I'm shooting this little orange diamond here. Boom! I blow it up, the whole thing goes up in a ball of flame. And if you miss it, the level kind of loops around, like you actually find yourself going forward, going back to a previous section you already flew through, and you have to go enter the ships all over again in order to reattempt the destruction. So, this level can actually go on longer 
if you're unfamiliar, that you have to destroy the orange diamonds, the energy cores inside of all of these ships. So, you know, just make sure you're, you're, just make sure you got that, your finger on the trigger. That blue thing I passed by, it gives you extra health. All of the rings give you health, like the yellow rings, the gray rings, the blue rings. They all give you health, and that's why you want to run into them. Uh, but the blue one in particular is actually a checkpoint. So if you die in battle, you will respawn where the blue ring was, the blue checkpoint. And uh, believe me, you don't want to miss them. You don't want to miss them. Okay, these signs are pointing down because the shutters are going to go down. So every time you see it says down, you want to make sure it goes... You put yourself, like, right up to where the base of the arrows are, you know. But I, I love this stuff. I love, like, the little sound effects as you're whizzing by them. It's so good. Ow! <laughs> okay, I'm not that good of a pilot, but, you know. <gasps> Again, I love it. I just love it. I love going fast and dodging all this stuff. It's so good. We're coming up to a boss a lot of people don't like, and I've seen a lot of people play this game blind, and they seem to be stuck on this boss for quite a while. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I never had problems with this boss. I, I, I admit its hit detection kind of sucks, and you think you hit the weak points, and for some reason you don't, and sometimes you don't hit the weak points, and yet the game thinks that you do. So the hit detection's kind of weird with this boss fight, but here we are with the atomic core, and... It's protecting its weak point right now, but it has all these electric panels on the, on the walls that you're spinning around. And you want to blow those up as you come up to them. Just make sure you don't run into the electricity, because the electricity will damage you if you run into it. But as long as you're, you know, tilting to the right and hitting the switches and dodging the lightning, you'll eventually take out all three of those contraptions, and then the weak point pops out and you just blow it up and boom, that's the whole boss. I made it look easy peasy, because... To me, it is easy peasy. I don't know. I just didn't think it was that bad any time I ever replayed this stage. But a lot of people don't like it. <laughs> Either way, that is so cool for the Super Nintendo. That is such a cool, cool sight to see on the Super Nintendo. I really like this. It's got primitive graphics, and I know it hasn't aged that well, but man, this is a piece of history, Star Fox. Star Fox is absolutely a piece of history. Anyway, folks, we will uh, finish off level one in part two. See you then.